arrest them. Well, that's what the lawyer for Natalie Holloway's family told the Aruban prosecutor. Yaron Vandersloot told us on the record that he sold Natalie Holloway on a beach in Aruba. He also named names, including his own father. Then Yaron emailed us that he made the whole story up. Did he make it up, or did he send that email because he panicked after he realized what he told us on camera? Now the Holloway family lawyer, John Q. Kelly, wants action in a letter to the Aruban chief prosecutor, Hans Moss. Kelly calls for the arrest of Yaron Vandersloot. Now, Yaron's father, Paulus, and the Kelpo brothers are also included. John Q. Kelly joins us. And John Q. Kelly, I hope you're not mad because we got the letter out of your client. Um, but anyway. No, that letter know, actually went out last Wednesday. So I know, it went out last Wednesday. Yeah. But, and I got my hands on it a little bit uh, a day or two ago or last week. But anyway, sure. um, it's your letter. Um, what do you want from Hans Moss, and have you heard from him? Uh, nothing but deafening silence out of Aruba. No, I haven't heard from him. Uh, you know, the, the point of the letter was, and uh, if you remember last year, Greta, with great fanfare and uh, press releases and, you know, uh, just all kinds of, you know, uh, dog and pony show, they arrested uh, the Kelpo brothers in Europe for absolutely no reason, no new evidence, just picked them up and held them for a month. And now they have, you know, new evidence. You have a damning admission by, by urine as to serious criminal conduct he engaged in. Uh, implicates others and uh, they haven't done anything with it and you know what everything you're on has said is consistent with the facts as we know them right now well you know what the unusual thing is as I go through this and this deviates a yeah. little bit is that I mean here are your options that he had nothing to do with it that it was a, an intentional murder which seems unlikely because there doesn't seem to be any elements of plans there's no there's no forensic evidence to show a murder and I've, and I've you know handled murder cases and so have you that it was an accidental thing like a drug overdose or alcohol but then why not just you know leave her if you're going to be a cad you don't you don't hide the body if you had nothing right. to do with it or you sold her you know and, and and selling her her just going off the island you know vanishing is most consistent with what he said and you know, you don't intentionally murder someone with with no, you know, forethought and be able to dispose of it when you're 17 years old and have probably an hour time frame there. And, you know, if he, he panicked or there was anything accidental, you know, you just, even if you don't admit it at the time, you, you realize you're going to mess after the fact and you, and you fess up. But, you know, Greta, people have to realize this is the first time he's directly implicated himself. The other times it's been an accident, someone else got rid of the body, you know, it, it wasn't anything he did. It was everybody else. Now he's saying it was me. It was the Kelpos. It was my father. And those are those are damning. And it, it's not up to Hans Moss, and it's not up to the Reuben investigators to, you know, make a decision that they they don't want to follow up on it. You know, judge his credibility and not look at the facts surrounding it and not follow through on it. Well, and we. I mean, he also at least represented to us that the tape that he gave us, or a chip, whatever you want to call it, sure. is a conversation with his father from probably January of this year in which right. his father talks about trafficking, talks about that, that he did a bad thing, assuming that it is his father. But what I don't understand is that why hasn't Hans Moss asked us or even asked you for that chip so at least he could begin to authenticate it, and instead what you tell me is you've had silence. Yeah, Greta, I'd, I'd, I'd like to think I could call Hans Moss tomorrow morning and tell him that... Uh, you're ready to pack up everything you have and then take a trip down to Aruba. I mean, you know, let's be realistic. Well, then it's too, listen, this is, this is a story. Yeah. Either either he is gone on vacation, which is also always a possibility, I should say. It happened I should before. And sarcastic. Sure. Or he's incompetent. Or he is corrupt. Uh, I think incompetent would almost be kind. I, you know, there, there are sinister things going on that just, you know, avoided too much and they make every effort to disprove anything that's inculpatory in this, this whole matter here and you know people talk about the timing of the tape that it came out in November but if you're released it the day after you had it what would they have done differently that they're not doing now I, it's, it's total something? inaction can I tell you is that sure. we have been the only people investigating this to turn that tape over when we got it to the Aruban police would be we be we be insane. These people have done nothing to investigate it. I mean it would be absolutely insane to turn it over to people who I think have been incompetent at best at investigation. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is that if, if people only knew the behind the scenes efforts that we've been doing to make to corroborate it, um, people can have all sorts of imagination that they want. But I but I can t and I'll, I'll tell you and I tell anybody who'll listen is that we have this information, we are willing to turn it over to the Aruban prosecutor. He doesn't want to see it. They don't want to solve this or make any attempt to either prove this or disprove this.
Greta, anybody that thinks that Euron called you out of the blue and asked you to meet him in Bangkok to confess to this is just being unrealistic. I know there was months of cat and mouse, investigative work, timing issues, uh, all kinds of things that went into that taping. There were conversations beforehand. And if I was Hans Moss, I'd want to say, Greta, how did this evolve? What conversations did you have? What planning went into this? How did you end up going over there and talking to him? Do you have other footage we haven't seen? Did you talk to him off the record? Did you talk to him afterwards? Who else spoke to him? Is this account been given before? I mean, he's just ignoring the whole issue. And, you know, it's a shame. And, you know, quite frankly, it's not, not going to happen. It's We're not, not going away. It's more than it's a shame. Come yeah. on, this is this is an American missing. This is a, this is a family is they're entitled to have the answer. And if the if the, prosec if the if they won't investigate, at least if we're bringing this, they ought to have the they ought to have the guts or the courage to look at what we do. But here's what I don't get: What is Holland's problem? I mean, Holland has responsibility in this too, and Holland's just sitting up there, and they you know, I don't know how many thousands away from Aruba, looking the other way, refusing anyone just to look at this information. I don't know if it's crazy or not, but we have it, and they won't do anything. Uh, I agree, and you know, as I said, we're not going away. I mean, Beth and Dave, or any parent out there watching, to just think that if their child was missing, there was a one in a million chance. They could still be alive somewhere, and, and believe me, there's no evidence to the contrary that, that, you know, Natalie is not possibly alive somewhere. To think that for one second these parents would let go of this is, is just sorely mistaken. Well, it, based on the Aruban law, it doesn't take a lot to arrest somebody any new evidence and um, my offer remains I'll be happy to meet Hans um, Hans Moss halfway show him everything we have the offer remains um, I, I, you know, I don't know how you're gonna get him to answer your phone calls um, I wish Beth would start calling her US senators I hope she raises holy hell with the State Department for help but just something just to look at it if nothing more I will be making a phone call tomorrow morning so we'll take it from there um, if, if you pick up the phone and call Hans does he, does he take your call uh, he usually gets back to me at some point. What's some point? It, it, it takes a little while. I mean, like a, uh, like a day or so? Uh, sometimes it might be a couple of days, sometimes it might be a week, sometimes it might be, you know, I have to follow up with the fax letter to and, you know, rattle the cage a little bit to get an answer. Yeah. But, you know, John, he, he's John. comfortable saying he talks to me. I, I, I beg to differ with the line of communication. I, I will tell you that every single prosecutor who is listening to this right now in this country is just shaking his or her head because that is so insane. Um, you know, it's just, it is just appalling. That's not the way it's supposed to be done or is done. They're, you, know, you know, it's one thing to be, well, whatever. Anyway. They've got enough to arrest him again, no question. And that's what you've asked for. An arrest. Who yep. do you want arrested? Paulus and the Kalpos and Euron? Yeah, I, I think an arrest warrant issued for Euron because he's out of the country. We always have a pretty good idea where he and is and what he's doing. The Kalpos are still there and Paulus is there. Pick them up like they did last year for no reason. Now they well, have a now reason. They, now they've now they got a reason. Plus, if you look at GretaWire.com, we got an email from someone telling us that, uh, I don't know if it's true or not, but I posted on GretaWire that, it, that uh, Euron was seen last night in a casino in Manila. But anyway, that's on GretaWire. John, thank you. Okay, Greta.